Mandy Rousseau, a political writer for the Main and Guardian. Now, Mandy's written, literally written the book on Julius Malema, and we're here to talk to her today about her thoughts on Julius Malema and the latest scandal he's facing. Tell us about the scandal around his income. Basically, what happened is people have been asking for a long time, how does someone like Julius Malema, who's 28 years old, who's never held a full-time job, except for his jobs within the ANC, ma manages to have such a bling lifestyle. He drinks only Moe champagne, he uh, you know, is at the best clubs, at the best parties, he drives big cars, he has recently purchased two very fancy homes. Um, how does someone like him afford that? And um, it's become increasingly interesting to see what, um, what people are saying about that because the allegations have been that he gets facilitation fees around certain uh, um, meetings that he would set up, people that he would connect, etc. Considering that a lot of his core constituents are, you know, frankly quite poor. How is this going to affect his core constituency? Actually, it's not. He is ev going to be even more popular mm -hmm. than before because how people see it is, look, he came from a poor background, he doesn't have a father, his mother was a domestic worker, he was raised by his grandmother, and he managed to, through whatever way, amass this kind of wealth. And, you know, in, in, the, in the constituency that he serves, um, bling and money and materialism reign supreme. That is the most important thing, to have a big car, to have a big house, to wear shirts that are majorly overpriced. Um, that, is, that is how you measure your success. So therefore, people see him as a, an example of someone who made it big and, and an example which they should follow. So they have no problem with this at all. They aspire to be like him one day. The big question I think everyone is asking is, will he survive this? Undoubtedly. Look, um, the fact that we and you know some, some people outside um, have problems with the fact that he has amassed so much wealth in rather dubious circumstances, because you know that he's failing to declare where he gets his income from, saying that that's private and has nothing to do with, with the media, um, I think that that raises eyebrows, definitely. But in terms of his core constituency, that won't change. The one thing that he is vulnerable on at the moment is that all this kind of um, claims by him that he is, you know, he's a, a victim of a conspiracy, etc. It weakens him because it shows that he's really insecure, that he feels that he needs to make up certain things in order to, um, in order to show that he's credible. And in that vacuum that he creates, he actually uh, gives the opportunity for contenders within the ANC Youth League to come up, raise their hands and say, we can take over from this guy because, you know, he's obviously on the skids. Mm -hmm. Now, the ANC Youth League is having its national conference next year in 2011, and then a new leader and a new president will be chosen. And this is why these kind of things are so crucial now, because now is the time when they start seriously lobbying for a second term for Malema. But with scandals like these, it creates a gap for other people to come up and use this for their own advantage. A lot of people, especially in the media and so on, are demanding that he declares income. Is it fair of us to do that given that he's not a public official? Look, he is under no obligation to declare his income. There are no rules about this w within the, the ANC and obviously within government. He um, has no obligation to, to say where his money comes from. But in terms of showing that the ANC is an organization that has members who will make money in a credible, open, transparent and legal way, I think he has to. People who are tired of hearing about Malema, what would you say to them? Well, you know, um, I think everyone has preferences, so just uh, don't read that part of the paper then and um, choose to ignore it the way some people choose to ignore sport or choose to ignore business or choose to ignore politics in general. Um, but uh, if, if you're interested in politics and the future of this country, it would be good to keep an eye on Malema uh, just to see where things are going because he will remain a powerful player for a while to come. Okay, great. Thanks so much for talking to us, Mandy. And you heard it, more Mulema to come, so get used to it. Cheers. Thank you.